Sorry, <laughs> that's personal medical questions. It's fine. That's just something Michael would ask me. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Well, I had an ovarian cyst that burst, and it was extremely painful. Oh, yeah. So I just was wondering. I'm hoping I don't. I guess we'll find out. Usually they're pretty harmless. Um, but what is it? Isn't there a condition where they starts with a P? P, yeah, it's like a... STI? No, it's, it's, um, it's gonna, it, I'm gonna be teaching this tutorial and it's gonna hit me. <laughs> but it's like, where you get a lot of cysts on your ovaries. Mm -hmm. Polycystic. Oh. Polycystic. Um, for the most part, it's not a huge deal, but it is painful when they burst. Oh, yeah. Just for a bit, though. <sighs> I don't think it's anything that serious. I'm just, you know, her serum. Yeah. Do we have a paintbrush that it doesn't matter that it gets wood stain on? Slash wood because you use something? If you go in my, on my, by my desk on the floor, there's like a little clear toolbox that has a billion watercolor brushes in there or just random brushes. You can use any one of those. Are you sure? Because they're hard to get out. They're, I don't, I don't use those brushes. Okay. I consider those throwaway brushes. Okay. Yeah. Also, if you you can if you remember, it's okay to not. You can show that at the end. Okay. So we're gonna do the live. Okay. Um, Restream says we're live. We're live on Facebook. I'm looking at us. I can't find it on YouTube. <laughs> Oh, I s If I stay in this and just show that you can do it, is that too much? No. There's a lot of stain over there. You can try all the different colors. That's a good one. We have a bunch of those plaques here. Yeah, samples. <clears throat> okay. Well. We're live. I can't find it on YouTube. So YouTube, I'm so sorry. Uh, is it weird if I ask Facebook if we're also on YouTube? I can only see Facebook comments. Yeah, I can't watch. Let us know. Yeah. Help help a sister out. Help <laughs> help your family out. Every time we say we're alive, I think of that one that we did with Ella. And she goes, we're alive? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have it on my phone. My phone got notified. <laughs> it's should be okay. PCOS, Sarah. Jill says you are on YouTube. Thank you, Jill. Thanks, Jill. Thanks, Jill. So helpful. Wow, I look really tired in this video. It's really great. You don't look super tired. That's because it's Tuesday. Thanks, Molly. Oh, yeah, you don't look tired. <laughs> Cute. It's because it's Tuesday. It's, 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 everyone's tired like, on Tuesday. It's the beginning of the week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Yes, everyone is telling us we're on YouTube now. Thank you so much. Yep, thank you. I just can't find it on my computer. Michael and I made tacos for dinner and we fried the shells so my hair smells like fried oil. Oh. It's driving me nuts. Donna says, we are here, Kenan. Donna. Thanks, Donna. Thank you. It makes me think of uh, Horton, here's a who. We are here, we are here, we are here. I don't know that well enough. You don't? Uh-uh. It's, yeah. it was, on, on our, well, as a child, it was after uh, the Grinch Stole Christmas cartoon, like the old original one. What? It was the like what on the same TV. The Grinch. I'm just kidding. <laughs> that was mean. I was so shocked. I know. Seriously. I got you, Keenan. Oh, my God. I got you so good. That was so rude. <laughs> oh. Susan wants to know how to turn on comments. 
I don't know. I think if you click on the video, Susan, click on the video and then the comments will show up underneath. And if they don't, I think you like... Or you can swipe. swipe to the left Sw if they're not there. If there's nothing there and it says swipe left to reveal comments, then swipe left. Rebecca says, I was about to log out and unsubscribe. Because <laughs> <laughs> I said I know what the <laughs> Very full. I still can't find it on YouTube. I was going to try and monitor the things. But... Ooh. Do you have sauce with tortellini? What do you put on I tortellini? Made, I found I made it. sauce. I put spinach, tomatoes, garlic, mushrooms, mm. half and half, and then parmesan. Listen, mm. that sounds amazing. I have leftovers, but I think Brock called dibs on them for breakfast. So. Brock, for Molly, breakfast? <laughs> I'm glad you're here. What are the yeah. odds I could borrow your car? <laughs> uh, I'm leaving for Michigan tomorrow, so totally. Perfect. Tonight? Yes. Yeah, I think I could probably work that out. That'd be great. I think I, can, I could probably get it back to you tonight. Because if I take your car, Nicole drives me home, and then I just drive my own car back to work, it'd be perfect. Because I don't want to take you out of your place, make you drive. I know that this is a weird concept to people it's that so are far from away. Missouri. Cameron is not far away from Hamilton. It's like 15 minutes. That's not far. <laughs> that is normal driving time to anywhere. All in right, any well, place. Either way, I need a ride home. <laughs> I don't mind giving you a ride home. Thank you. Found it. I found oh, the YouTube link to our live video. Debbie says she's ready for Molly's puns. Yes. Oh. I always feel so much pressure. You should. People like, expect a lot of you. <laughs> Marcy but Clark are kind of brutal. has already made a pun. Oh, what is it? She said, I had to miss the last two lives, and it was really dragging me down. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to make this one. <laughs> That's a good one. Good old she dragon. She that on the fly. Yeah, so she... Ah! <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got. That's good. <laughs> Molly's like, That's it. That's all you're getting. And I'll go now. I've served my purpose. <laughs> Are we, what time are we at? 7.15. Oh, look at me, I had like Perfect this. Perfect timing. <laughs> look at that. Okay. Hello everybody, welcome to Let's My Cart. Thank you so much for being here. You're really amazing and I have a great time painting with you every week, so good job. We are doing <laughs> Dragonfly tonight. Ooh. Ooh and ah. Thank you. We have Molly here. You've seen her before. She's really great at puns. She's Brock's <laughs> wife. We love her. Keenan Sue in camera, I'm as here. always. He's I'm, back. I'm back. Last week, Michael filled in. They got to meet my girls. My girls came last Fun. week. So that it was a big family affair. Yeah, last that's week. fantastic. And we also have Nicole. She's not painting with us, but she's in the background. So hi, Nicole. <laughs> you want to? <laughs> Could they see her? Yep, got it. <laughs> okay. <perfect. laughs> okay. So tonight, we're using two brushes, like we always use. Oh, Jean says her niece Marley is with her tonight. They did the mama bear together, and it was a gift for my, her mama, and she crushed it. So welcome, Jean and Marley. Thanks for painting with us. Um, oh, somebody said they like my haircut. Oh, Thank you. nice. I was feeling a little bold. She was like, how much do you want to cut? I'm like, an inch. And then she kept, and then she like put it, she's like, here, I'm like, no, like to here. She's like, that's like four inches. I'm like, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> and then she got it and I was like, oh, that's really short. But that is I hilarious. Like it. I like it. So it's fine. Okay. Kimberly says Keenan needs to pop on the video. Yeah, Keenan. So come, I'll come say hi. Come say hi. Real fast. He's wearing his film apron. apron. That was him asking permission. <laughs> <laughs> Keenan, that was such a great walk. Thank that you. you. <laughs> okay. Focus. I already am. I'm having a. I'm having a hard time focusing. It's gonna be great, Molly. You gotta I'm help so me focus. Okay. I will not be helping. Keenan does not help in that regard. <laughs> okay. Round six and a round two. Our go-to brushes. We use them always. They're really wonderful brushes. We have them on our website. They're Princeton 4050 Heritage Ser Series 
Synthetic Sable paintbrush. Excellent, excellent work. Um, we are using four colors tonight. So we have magenta and leaf green and tiger orange and berry blue. So essentially you need like a dark pink, a neutral green, a purplish blue, and orange. That's it. Yeah. Great. Uh, we have an outline for this project <laughs> here. I've already outlined mine, but I'll, we'll go over how to outline it. Molly's got to outline hers. So you can get this outline on our website, letsmakeart.com, just under the dragonfly kit. There's a little bug. Okay. And five steps for this dragonfly. First, we're going to do the body here. Oh man, somebody posted a dragonfly and then the different parts on their body. Ooh, that's useful. I know, with labeled areas and they're like, Sarah, you should print this for the live and I'm like, great idea and I never did it. Well, the pace that our printer is moving at, it would be here all night. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's okay, you guys can help me out. Um, so anyway, step one, body. Step two, wings. Step three, we're gonna put in the shadows. Step four, we're going to do the laying legs and the details on the wings. And then step five is just finishing details. Okay. It's all about the details. Just details, details. 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 Um, we are going to trace and then do our oath and then do warm ups and then paint our project. Trace. Oath. Project warm ups. Project. <laughs> Yes, nailed it. Perfect. So, when you are tracing an image onto your watercolor paper, the first thing that you are going to want to do is center it on your page, kind of. Just be aware that your eight and a half by 11 sheet is a different size than your nine by 12 watercolor paper. So, you know, I'm just saying like, if you're gonna move it all the way down here, your wing is coming off the paper. So, you know, just be aware. After you tape it, or after you like, like where it is on the paper, you tape it. I use painter's tape, but you can also use Wasi tape. If you don't have any of those, you can use regular tape. Just like put it on your clothes a bit so it's not as sticky and it won't warp your paper. So there is that. Then you take your graphite paper, which is folded in with your Let's Make Art Matter postcard if you are a subscriber and you are going to put your graphite paper dark side down. And any line that you make tracing will show up on your paper. Okay, so I'm gonna give that to Molly so she can trace. And Molly, I'm gonna give you a colored pen so you can see what you've traced. I like that. Little tips when you're tracing. One, you want to do really light pressure. What I always do is I will make a mark first and then lift up my graphite paper and see what that marks look like on my paper. If it's too light, I'll go darker. If it's too dark, I will go lighter. But try and make it as light as you possibly can because watercolor is transparent. So you will see these marks through the watercolor. To get light, to get a light line, you want to do light pressure. Or if you use like a felt tip marker that has a naturally soft tip which means that you're going to naturally get a lighter line than if than opposed to like a pencil or a ballpoint pen that has a really hard tip so if you have a marker those are really helpful um, and the other thing is I did not trace the detail lines on the wing and the reason why I didn't trace the detail lines on the wing is because um, if you have a hard time with your marks being really dark, you don't want these detail lines on the wing to be so dark or else that will be a little bit distracting. So I just didn't trace them and we'll just kind of freehand when we get to that point. If you feel comfortable about the pressure of your marking and you know that you can make a pretty light line, then you can trace them. But if you're a beginner and you're struggling with that graphite paper, you can just leave that off and then eyeball it. A uh, felt tip won't bleed through the graphite paper. I've never had it bleed through. I'll go faster. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Molly. I'm like, how? Wait. 
Wait a How old are you? <laughs> Rita has a question. Oh, uh, Rita wants to know when we're doing the Golden Retriever live. <laughs> <laughs> yes. One day I'll have an answer for you, Rita. I really will. That. She, all she says is question. I bet you can guess what it is. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> We haven't decided that yet because yeah. our Tuesdays and nights are filled up with projects I'm already doing. There might be an opening soon though. Yeah. Actually, maybe. Uh, I got to confer with some people, but I think it actually might work at the end of this month. Yeah. Ooh, let me look. Let me look, let me look, and I'll let you know. Also, Rita, don't worry, I will private message you and let you know. <laughs> Donna says Sarah is winging it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Susan is feeling so sad because she can't see the comments. She can't be a part of the fun. Well, soon in, Susan, you can still chime in, and I will read your comments. Alana, this is her first live. She's so excited. Welcome. <laughs> okay. Okay, I am. You you getting there? I'm pretty finished. Now, two things I would like to say about the outline. One, this is not this is not gospel truth. As in, if you go and paint outside of the lines, that's okay. We kind of want that a little bit. And two, if you forget to make a mark on your paper, because once you untape this, it's like really impossible to tape it back on where it's aligned. Um, just just uh, wing it and it's not a big deal. So don't like get down on yourself. Not a big deal at all. Okay. We have someone joining us from the Philippines. <gasps> Welcome. I wish I could speak um, Tagalog. Tagalog. I don't know the time difference. I believe you. Okay, I'm trying to get, sorry, I just need an extra sheet for our warm-ups. Okay, now put your outline to the side. Now we're doing oath? Yeah, we're going to do our oath now. So, everybody raise your right hand and repeat after me. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise, I promise to be, be kind, kind to myself. myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise, I promise not, not to, to compare, compare my work. work. And I promise to have fun. Promise to have, promise fun. To have fun. And I love doing that because I, maybe you're not like me, but I am a little competitive by nature. I'm much better now than I was in my youth. But anyways, I even with things like art, I would compare and I would always look and see how other people are doing and then judge mine accordingly. And that just takes the fun out of it. So don't do it to yourself. You, you, you guys, you're better. You're better than me. And you can do this and it's not fair to compare because we've all been painting for different times. That's right. Okay. I was about to lay a beat down for you. you yeah. Rhyming. <laughs> <laughs> was I? Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> Okay, fun fact, did you know that I used to change the oath every week? In the I very beginning. I don't want to say yeah. that I'm not surprised, but... I used to. I believe I that. Say, was it on yeah. purpose? Yeah. Oh, it was on purpose. It was on purpose. I okay. would change it. Okay, okay. okay. Were mind. you saying because I forgot? Well... No. Okay, cool. It's because I thought like, oh, I'll just switch it up every single week and we'll promise to do a new thing, and then I stopped doing that. <laughs> okay. It's okay. a lot. Painting. Here we go. Ashley says, are we allowed to sell our artwork even though it is your design? Ashley, great question. The answer is yes, because we are so wonderful. Um, but just to clear some things up, we've been talking about maybe releasing like an okay and not okay thing to do. Where like we really like the idea of you being able to sell the artwork you paint with us like original designs, but then we should probably make a stipulation that you can't like sell it commercially, right? So, yes, you can sell the original that you paint with us is what I'm trying to say. Ashley, go for it. Okay, warm-ups. We're focusing. We're doing great. Okay, 
The first thing we're gonna practice is values. So with our dragonflies, because their wings are transparent, we wanna get a really light value on the wings. Now the value is all about the lightness and darkness of a color, and if this is not your first time turning into the live, you've, hear, you've heard me talk about value a lot, we practice it a lot, and that is because it is one of the most important things that you can learn in painting or art in general. If you can distinguish values and when those transition and how dark the values are, you can create form. And that's really what we're trying to do is create form and recreate three-dimensional objects on a two-dimensional surface. That's what art is, right? So, I'm grabbing my round six. I'm dipping it in my water. I'm hitting it off, actually hitting the bristles off the side of my cup after I wet my brush. And that is because if you go straight from your paintbrush to your paper, that is too much water. So you hit it off the side, so then it's not dripping anymore, but it's still moist enough to pick up paint. Now, I'm going to grab a color, any color your heart desires. This is just warm up. And I'm gonna fill my paintbrush with the color. Okay, so I'm not just like barely touching it. I'm like literally bathing my paintbrush in this paint, okay? And then you're going to paint, okay? And this is our dark value. So this has more paint than water, okay? Now you're gonna dip your paintbrush a couple of times in the water, do, do, hit it off the side of the cup so it's not dripping, paint another area. This is more of a medium value, okay? And dip again, do, do, hit it off the side of the cup, paint that. And you can see that with each dip, your color gets a lighter value. And that is the beauty of watercolor, my friends. That's why I love it so very much with all of my heart, because you are using water as if it is white paint, and it is magnificent. Because it's not white paint, you don't have to buy white paint, you just use water. And just keep on going until you get a barely there color. So, when you are painting anything that has form, you want to make sure that you have at least three different values. These are light values. Hold on, let me get a better pen. These are our light values, these are our medium values, and this is our dark value, okay? So when you're looking at our dragonfly, we should have all three. I would say that here on the legs and also kind of going on in the middle of the body is our dark value. Um, the rest of the body, uh, and on the sides of the body, that's our medium value, and the wings are our light values, and we have some highlights in there. So you wanna make sure you have all three. The shadow on the dragonfly is also a really light value. So we're gonna do that same idea, except have it be a transition from dark to light. So I'm going to get my paintbrush stamp, and I'm gonna pick up a color, any color my heart desires, and I'm gonna start off and I want to work fairly quickly. After I put in my dark value, I rinse, and then instead of doing leaving space, I'm going to go right where I left off. And then dip my paintbrush again, and right where I left off. And this is a value transition, where we go from dark to medium to light, just like that. Okay? Very nice, Molly. Good job. You're welcome. <laughs> Now one thing I would like to say with watercolor is that the paint that we use, or just paint in general with watercolor, if it's on a wet surface, it will try and evenly disperse most of the time. So, especially if you are working it with your brush back and forth. So if I want an even value, like this, so you see I have kind of two values here, but if I work my paintbrush back and forth across the entire thing, that will even out and those values will disappear and they will just become one value. So that's not a bad thing to do because sometimes you do want an even value so that is helpful to know but if you want to keep it separated where it goes from dark to light then don't work back and forth across the surface or else it will just even out. Okay? Next thing we are going to practice is thin lines. And this is another one we practice a lot, but it's really difficult to do, and so don't get angry at yourself. But what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to switch to my round two. I'm going to get it damp and then I'm going to pick up some paint, any color I want. Now, when you are picking up paint with the intention to make thin lines, you want to make sure that your paintbrush does not have too much water or too much paint because if you do have too much water and too much paint, it will create a thicker line because there's just too much in your brush. What? I just I went to wipe it off and I put blue right in the middle of the paint. It's fine. <laughs> That's Sorry. okay. This is a palette. It's okay to put paint on different places of the palette. Yeah. You're doing it I right, just, Molly. <laughs> just right by the orange. I don't like it. Okay. <laughs> orange and blue look great together. Yeah, they really complement each other, don't they? <laughs> okay, so what I like to do is I pick up paint and then I actually kind of like to do what Molly did sometimes. If I feel like there's too much on my brush, I'll just swoop it to get rid of the excess or I'll flatten my paintbrush. So I'm, I'm kind of like picking up paint, pressing down on one side, flipping it and pressing down on the other side. That's going to naturally pinch my bristles together to make a nice fine point. Then I am going to do vertical hold. So I'm just on the tip of my brush, light pressure, and then go, just go. Now, sometimes, and this is all where it's personal, sometimes people do much better doing thin lines up and down, either going start from the bottom and going up or starting from the top and going down. Some people do better thin lines going horizontal. I'm one of those people. Just turn your paper accordingly. There's no wrong. So whatever you feel comfortable. Oh, Susanna says, when your paint slightly dries and you need to take away color, how do you do that? Great question. So Susanna, if I want to lighten up this blue that's here, you cannot erase color entirely from watercolor. You can't, but you can lighten it. So to do that, I'm just going to take a damp brush and wet the area. And then you can do two things. You can just use your paper towel and pick up, or you can just use a damp paintbrush and try and lift and wipe it on your paper towel. It just depends on how much you're trying to pick up. Okay, Linda wants to know how I got brown. I got brown by mixing green and magenta together. Those are complementary colors, or red and green are, and magenta's as, as, acting as our red. So you mix those together, you get brown. It's magical. Um, Trying to think if there's anything else we need to go over, but I think I think we're good on that. So let's paint. Okay. So keep your scratch paper handy if you wanted to test colors or brush strokes before you try them on your painting. Okay. We ready? We're ready. <laughs> Sorry. Got this girl. I just realized it was a, quiet. We have an unrelated dr to dragonflies joke if you're ready. I love jokes. Okay. Why is the ocean salty? Because it didn't, because you didn't wave back. Because the ocean waves to the beach, but the beach never waves back. Yes! I almost got that spot on. You did. That was close. That was from Suzy Q023. Suzy Q, great. Great job. Also known as Suzanne. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, you guys. Help me focus here. Okay, we're doing this. Oh, Skip says tonight's the first time in 11 months that she's been able to mix a decent brown. Congratulations. Nice. It's just complementary colors. Orange and um, blue make a good brown also. Except it has green tones. And when it has green tones, all you do is grab my yenta. And now it's brown. Magical. Magical. Okay, thank you, everybody. Let's do this. We're starting with the body. We're going to start with the head. Now, you'll notice that we have some really dark areas on here, but we don't have black in our repertoire. But that's okay, we can mix it. So, I am going to kind of mix all of the colors together. I'm going to start off with blue. 
And then I'm going to grab some magenta. And then now it's purple. And so I'm like, okay, that's reading more purple than black. I'm going to grab some green. Let's see what green does to this. Okay, now I have a really dark brown. That's pretty good. It has pretty strong tones of green though, so I'm going to balance that out by grabbing more magenta. And now it's kind of a reddish brown, which is not a bad color, but I want it to read more black, so I'm going to grab more blue. That's beautiful. So now we have, it's a really, really dark brown, um, but it's a cool brown. And so this will read as a black when we paint. Okay? Okay, so what I'm going to do is kind of in the head here, I have these little circles and I put those there because that's where kind of like, if you look on the reference photo, that's where the darkest value is. So I'm gonna start off by putting like that black color there. They're not supposed to look like eyeballs, don't make these into eyes. This is just like the darkest value on the shell. They are eyes. Is that what their eyes look like? Their, yeah, their eyes consist of most of their head there. Are these their eyes right here? Yeah. <laughs> Sarah. Uh, Lori. Yeah. Uh, she put in, she put up the picture in water, let's make art watercolor of the dragonfly diagram. Oh, Lori, thank you. But I can't tell where the eye starts or stops. I'm so. really sorry that I didn't print it that out. It shows like the eye is like the entire head. Basically. Okay, these are the eyes, but they're not pupils. That's what I'm right. trying to say. Yeah. Don't make pupils and irises, okay? That's not what we're doing. But they're kind of multicolored. They have a greenish blue, so I'm going to mix green and blue together and then kind of blend out from there. Keenan, do you want to do a close-up actually on I, this since we're I doing that? I just switched. Oh, good. Look at you. It says it's called a compound eye. Yes. So then, basically, we want the center of these eyes to be dark, and then as they get around to the edge of the eye, they kind of turn into this light green. Now, if you want your green to have a warm tint, so it's almost like a lime green, then mix a little bit of the orange with your green, and now you'll have this really warm, yellowish green. So are using a round two or six? I'm using a round two right now because this is a fairly small area. Okay. So that is my, these are the eyes. Their darkest value is kind of at that center and then it lightens up as it goes out. Did you and start with a six or has it been a two the whole time? I've been using a two the whole time for the, for the eyes. Okay. And then I'm gonna use this black that I mix up that's still there as this area in between the eyes that goes down this little triangle. And then there's like little pincher things, the mouth, I would assume. Mandible things, uh, is that what they're jaws. called? Jaws. Is that what the diagram says? The diagram says forehead, face, jaws. There's several things for me to look at here. Okay, I'm just gonna use like green on the outside and then fill it in with blue. But this is a pretty small area, so don't stress, this isn't, this isn't gonna make or break your painting right here, so you're fine. You're, whatever you're doing, you're doing it right. If you're winging it, just keep going there. Just keep <laughs> winging it. Uh, Amy says, I've noticed that when you load up your brush, you have way more paint in your brush than I do. How much paint do you start with in the palette? How many drops about? I'm trying not to waste my paint, but I may be, but maybe I'm not using enough. Uh, Amy, first of all, if you are a subscriber, this is an obscene amount of paint right here. So don't be afraid. <laughs> this is a lot of paint. It will last you an extremely long time. But what I usually like to do, here I'll pull, like I, I just kind of squirt 
I'll just show, is it overhead, Keenan? Yes. Okay. I just go along the edge and I do a puddle about that big is usually how I start. And then if I need to add more along the way, then I do. So if I'm sharing with somebody, then I'll do a little bit more because both of us are gonna be pulling from it. But if it's just myself, that's usually the most um, I do. Okay, great job, we're moving on. Now we're going more towards the body. What's that part called? The, the top part of the body, this. Keenan, are you looking at the diagram? No, I'm not, sorry, what, oh. That is the thorax. Thorax? Thorax. Something like that. I think it's thorax. I oh yeah, so. thorax. You're right. Sorry. Okay, great. So the thorax, we're gonna paint that now. Now I have these little marks on the upper part. Those are reflections um, because I I've never touched a dragonfly, but I think that they're like shell-like a little they're bit. Shimmery, yeah. They're shimmery, they have light it's shining on them. Exoskeleton. Exoskeleton. <laughs> out some words here. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds right. It's they're kind of crispy when they dry out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we're leaving those as glare, okay? So again, I'm gonna use a, this kind of darker mixture here, and then I'm gonna use green and I just really like the colors um, that this makes when you mix together the green and the blue. You get this gorgeous, like desaturated turquoise color that I think is fabulous, so I'm gonna use that. Also, I feel like there's so many different colors of dragonflies that you can do whatever you want. You know what I mean? Like, maybe you're like, I love purple dragonflies. Well, make purple. You can mix that blue and magenta together, you'll probably make a great purple. And then on the top part of the body, I use that same lime green. So just kind of leave a little bit of the white space just for a little bit of a glare. Like that. And then I use this black to kind of go in between the, these parts, right? Because I feel like you, it's, you see like in between their exoskeleton and it's just black. Yeah. Mind you, I'm making all of this up. I've never seen a dragonfly close up. Yeah. But it sounds Probably right. Look in the grill of your car. Ooh. And see them. <laughs> You're it's always a good right. old dead dragonfly in the grill. <laughs> I did read through our YouTube comments when we posted this that they eat mosquitoes. Yeah, we love dragonflies. So dragonflies are great. Yeah. They great. get really thick sometimes in the summertime. Like, like thick, like big, like, or a lot no, of them? like thousands. Oh, really? Yeah. So I drive super slow through the swarm. Okay. You're doing great. <laughs> Good job. I'll get caught up. No, you're doing awesome. Just trying to get some color stuff in there, maybe. Oh. I'm painting it. And then whenever you're ready, you can move on to the body here. So I'm going to start off with the blue at the top, just straight blue. And then as I work my way down through the body, it turns to green. Again, this is your painting, so you can make these colors however you want. Somebody said they lost Facebook audio. Is that true? Can you hear me? I can hear you just fine. Okay. Gloria, I don't know what's going on. Okay. So I started off with my blue. You can drop some strong color in there if you want it to be brighter. And now I'm going to start transferring to my green. And then the tip of my tail, I'm gonna do like a, a light 
green mixed with orange, so it's like this really warm yellow green. Oh, Sarah, I like that. Isn't that nice? That's so nice. Nice little color change. I'll get there. I think I'm craving sweets because things that have been painted today have been making me think of food. What? Like is, sugary. What is making you food? The green and blue makes me want to have like a really yummy, like a scout camp shake of ice. I don't even know what it's. Whoa, Ugh. whoa, those are so many specific. words that had nothing to do with dessert. Yeah, scout okay. camp ice? Scout camp. You go okay. to scout camp, they've got the trade shack. You go to the trade shack, they've okay. got the slushies. That's the word. Slushies. slushies. That's what you're looking for. Oh, 7 <laughs> Eleven style slushy. Uh, we have homemade ice cream at home and ooh. chocolate chocolate cookies if you want ooh. that. Molly, why you gotta be mean like that? We can't be at your house right now. <laughs> I thought at this moment, but it's an open invitation for the rest of the night. Oh, well, Kenan, I mean, Molly's giving you a ride no. home after you go to her house. <laughs> that does not have Brock's blessing, so I don't know if he wants to share his food, but. I don't care what Brock says. <laughs> okay. Great. Now there is the black part in the center of the bodies that you can see that goes along the middle. We're not going to put that in yet because if we put it in and our green blue area is still wet, that black will just bleed everywhere. It will overtake our painting. So we're going to wait for that to dry before we do the black part. Okay. Now, oh, and in between the, the wings, I just did the, I just did some green mixed with like a little bit of like at the beginning of the wings, it will be brown, but we don't have to put those in yet. But I just did green. But you can do whatever color, because this is your painting. Okay, now we're gonna go to step two, which is the wings. So this is where it's pretty important that you do a light value. So think back to our warm ups. think back to how much water you use to get this light value, okay? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to my six because we're doing a larger space. I'm going to get it wet and I'm going to mix my brown. So I'm going to grab some green and grab some magenta and mix that together. Now, if you want your brown to be warmer, grab some orange and put that in there. Okay, so now we have a nice brown. And the reason why this specific part was skipped in the tutorial was because our camera just stopped working for literally 30 seconds. <laughs> and instead of refilming the whole thing, we're just like, no, nah, let's roll with it. <laughs> we're like, it'll be fine. And then apparently they missed how I mixed the colors in that part. I thought you just mixed oh. me painting one section of the wing. And so I'm like, oh, that's fine. I do three others. But because it was the beginning, they missed how I mixed the colors. So Awkward. sorry about that. But here we are, it's brown. It's just it's just green and magenta, and if you want it warmer, a little bit of orange, okay? Well, thank you for being so understanding. Uh, let's make art friends. Yeah, thank you. You guys are great. Okay, now on the tip of the wing, it's a little bit darker here, so if you can see at the top, it's dark here, and it's dark here, and then it's dark here, and it's dark here. It's where the ring starts, uh, or the wing. I think I said ring. Okay. Could you do a 15 second plug about how to lift up color? Yes, if you need to lift up color, you just put water on the area that you want to lift up color and then either blot it with a paper towel or use a damp brush to lift up color. That was 14 seconds. Was it really? Nice. Well, I'm really good at my job. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, so I have my brown. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this brown to outline the top part of the wing, just the top part, not the entire thing, just this part, okay? And you're using a six? And I'm using my six. And then what I'm going to do is not vigorously rinse my brush, but rinse it a couple of times, like swish it back and forth in the water a couple of times, and then use that really watered down brown and that's even probably a little bit too dark. I'm gonna lighten it more to almost like a barely there color. Like it's mostly water. And you can take from the brown of the wing that you put down and use mostly water to spread it out in the wing area.
okay? So the thing I just want you to pay attention is we wanna make sure it's light because these wings are transparent and if you make these wings too dark of a value, um, then it just will look a little bit off because it will make them seem heavier than they are. If you put accidentally put too much color and you need a light, and for example, let's just say you're going crazy and you're doing this, and it's like, calm down, that's too dark. Sure. Just take some a damp brush, so rinse all the color off your brush, and just start lifting that color up and wiping it on your paper towel. So you won't be able to erase it completely, but you will be able to lighten it enough to where it's light. And you said that was with a damp brush? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Keenan brought it to our attention that whenever we say grab a damp brush, it sounds like something else. Without the P. Without the P. <laughs> okay. So we're going to do the same thing on the other side of the wing. I'm not going to do the second one yet. I'm going to do the top wing of the other side. So I'm going to grab that brown. I'm going to go along the edge of my wing, I'm going to grab water and use a very, very light value. Maria says, better than saying a moist brush. Because <laughs> that's what Brock said a lot. <laughs> yeah, Brock is all about the moist. People gave him such a hard time. They're like, please stop saying that word. I wonder if that's the most disliked word I feel like it's a really common one I, for people that I use think that it's word. a really common misliked word. I agree. What is the most, yeah, disliked word? That'd be a great, uh, throw in your least favorite word. Yeah, what's your least favorite word? My husband's least favorite word is uh, moist and uh, tissue. Tissue? Yeah, because he says it like tissue. What? And if you say it like tissue, yeah, that's a terrible word, but I say yeah, it tissue. Tis yeah, tissue is a terrible <laughs> word. Yeah. Yes, yeah. he does. Well, now that I know that. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing that I would like to point out is you'll notice that my wing has extended further than the next, the start of the next wing, and that is because these wings overlap. And because they overlap, they're transparent, and you will be able to see where they overlap. So I'm actually overlapping them here. So then when I go and do my second wing, they will have a second layer of paint where they overlap. And that's what we want because that's what you would see. You would actually see the one wing underneath the top wing. Uh, Leslie says hate is her least favorite word. Uh, yeah, Rhonda says fester. <laughs> that's a good, that's a good, that's a gross word. <laughs> It depends Wounds. what you're talking yeah, I think, about. I think of bees. Why? Oh. When is fester okay? Like, when my feelings are festering inside of me. Oh. But if you're talking about wounds, then yeah, it's a little gross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ointment is Sue's least favorite, and puberty is Casey's least favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to go back. I have to go back in time a few seconds. Adam says, "I do a shot of Patron every time someone says damp brush." <laughs> <laughs> then you're having a great oh time. Oh my gosh! I would love to would see hilarious. how your paintings turn out. You are feeling good. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Marcy says, "My least favorite is summer break has started." That may be more than one. <laughs> <laughs> They're probably excited for school to be back in session. Um, uh, I was going to make a point and I forgot it, what it was because we were talking about words. Is it about the paint? Oh, wait, somebody had a question. Sorry. Susanna says, is it okay that we have already drawn the veins in the wings? Absolutely. Just do your wash over them and then when we're ready to go do that detail work, then outline them then. No problemo. Christy says, moist, treat, and sop. Sop, sop is a bad Sopping. word. Sop. 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 With a P. Treat. I've never heard of treat well, being a problem. I'm a big fan well, of listen, treats. Listen, I like so. treats. <laughs> I get happy <laughs> when somebody says treat. Treat yourself. <laughs> treat yourself. Donna says, whatever. Mm. It is frustrating when somebody says that to you. Yep. Yeah. Sharona says, 
Uh, I don't mind moist. Stupid is my least favorite. Mmm, yeah. Smock. <laughs> my husband hates mouthfeel. <laughs> 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 well, it's two words. It's a, but it's in quotes. Mouth feel. <laughs> I don't know what the. Maybe. In what scenario? <laughs> okay, I'm moving on to the second wings, and I'm just going to repeat that same thing. I'm going to do dark brown on the top of the wing only, and then mostly water to spread out. Oh, it's related to food preparation. Really? I mean, Keenan used to work in the food industry. As a server <laughs> and, and at and Wendy's. And Wendy's. You mean they don't talk about There was never a time that they were like, Wendy's? we got to get our mouth feel ready. They're like, test these fries. Do they have a good mouth feel? Listen, there was a lot of food I did uh, test. Yeah. But I wasn't asked to did test you them. Did people's plates whenever they didn't finish their food? Only if I knew them. Oh. That's fair, I suppose. Yeah. If I if it was servers, I would eat I would eat after them. Yeah, but if it was like customers, nah. Um, can I tell you guys a story about how I went to? Yes, please. Um, what is that? Uh, P.F. Chang's, and I was in college and I was really poor. And the table next to me ordered a great wall of chocolate and then left with taking one bite. And I was just like, I'm sorry. That's a huge piece of chocolate cake with raspberry. <laughs> and I was like, waitress, no. can I have that cake? No. <laughs> she looked at me like I was crazy. She's like, do you want that cake? I'm like, they didn't eat it. And that's a $10 piece of cake. And she was just like, I will bring it over to you. No. And I was just like, thank you very much. Are you allowed to do that actually as, as waiters? I mean, if it looks like you're gonna throw it in the trash, why would you not? I, if the customer doesn't care where they got the cake from, I don't think it matters. The manager yeah. would probably be like, hey, let's not do that. Like when I worked at Walmart, they asked me not to hug the customers after a while. <laughs> so it's probably the same scenario. But to, just so you guys know, I just cut off the portion where they ate off and put that to the side and then ate the rest of the cake. Yeah. And I, I regret so nothing. Yeah, no. And then I absolutely ordered my own piece at the end of the meal. I was gonna say you saved money, but. <laughs> no, nope. I just got two cakes for one. <laughs> And I didn't even think about how weird that was until the waitress was like, well, I guess it's okay. They didn't look diseased. And then I was like, oh, maybe it's not good to eat off people you don't know. Yeah. It's fine. I was, it I was 18. I was dumb. It's, there's worse things that you can do. Young, dumb, and broke, I think they say. <laughs> Young, dumb, and broke. That's exactly what it was. So Adam says, uh, talking about the mouthfeel thing. Yeah. He said, like, and in quotes, Try Fruit Loops on this hot dog. Such an interesting mouthfeel. So it must be the, the combinations of foods as being the mouthfeel, like, like the texture of different but foods But why don't you combined. just say texture? That I do not know. Is that the same thing, though? Help us out. Adam? Uh, Jessica said that it's a health code violation, what I just did. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you which P.F. Chang's it was, so you'll never know. They're safe. <laughs> They have to protect themselves against suits if you should get sick and claim it was their cake. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. But that's such a low blow. How many people are doing that? You knew what you signed does up that for ever if you get someone Nobody else's cake. Nobody actually ever does No. Fine. Okay. We are off topic. We were just filling in wings. So Molly, how are you doing? They look oh, great. Thanks. Your wings look so good. You guys want to see Molly's? This is Molly's. Her colors look great. Her shell shinies look great. I love how transparent her wings are. Yep, big fan. They look good, her color like on her blue. body. Yeah, look at that pop of blue right there and right there, I like it, on okay. the thorax. Yeah, the frontal thorax. The frontal thorax. Okay, we're moving on to step three. We're gonna put on our shadows. So, what I'm going to do, sorry, I'm reading comments. Me too. Oh, I have a friend who won't eat shrimp because of the rubbery mouth feel. Oh. Okay, okay, okay. I feel like I'm starting While to understand. While I disagree with shrimp having a rubbery mouth feel. While I disagree with that because shrimp is amazing. Big fan of shrimp, absolutely. Shrimp trucks in Hawaii is one of the greatest pleasures of my life. Jumbo shrimp from Giovanni's. Garlic 
garlic. What about mm. red lobster? Red lobster <laughs> biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we haven't done the legs yet, and that's okay. We don't want to do the legs yet. We're going to put the shadows in first. So to get my shadow color, I'm going to grab a little bit of the blue. And if you still have, like, I still have a portion of this black left over that kind of has gray undertones. I'm going to grab some of that, actually, and mix that with my blue. So it's a, it is a blue-gray color we're going for. Now, you can see here, because I'm using, trying to do a light value, I'm not putting the, my brush and bathing it in paint, right? I'm going to the edge of where there's very little paint with my damp brush, and that's the amount that I'm picking up. That's how you get a lighter value from the beginning. So instead of like grabbing a dark color and then rinsing your water off, all you have to do is make sure that your brush is clean and then just barely grab a little bit of the paint that's kind of pulled off to the side. And that's how you make sure that the value is light. So now I can paint straight with that, and it's a really light color. And it, there's not too much water, because that's the other problem usually beginners have, is they'll have too much water that it pools on their um, page. So now that I have this bluish grayish color, I'm gonna start off by putting the shadow in. So I'm gonna work my way around the body. The shadow is mostly on the left side. It comes a little bit around the right. And I'm going to follow the shape of the body first and also the legs, okay? And then I'm going to use water and start spreading this shadow out. Now, if you watch the pre-recorded tutorial, I did do a little um, example on my phone using my flashlight of how shadows work. But basically, if the light source is farther away from the object, the, the shadow is usually diffused. So, um, and again, this it's hard to teach shadows because it's so it really just depends on the light source. Light source is everything with shadows. But if we had a flashlight shining on our dragonfly that was close to our dragonfly, it would have very, very strong shadows underneath that are super dark and really, really defined. But because this light is just diffused, which means it's farther away, then our shadow becomes less um, like outlined and it just softly transitions out, okay? so. We're gonna start, it's gonna be darkest where the bodies and the legs hit. And then it just uh, softens out a little bit, like there. And I'm gonna do a little bit on the right side too. And I'm just painting over the legs and it's okay because we're gonna go over those after our shadow is dry. You're using a round six, right? I am using a round six. And then on the tail, the tail itself is casting a shadow as well. So, or I guess that would be the body. We have a little bit of a shadow there. The other thing that I highlighted during the pre-recorded tutorial where I was showing shadow with my flashlight is also wherever the object is touching the ground and the light is close to it, that is where your shadow will be darker. So if you notice on our dragonfly, the legs have a little bit of a darker shadow than the rest and that's because, and the body, and that's because that is the closest thing to the surface, so that's where the shadow is gonna be a little bit darker. It's the same for like cars. If you look at the shadow underneath cars, the shadow is usually strongest next to the tires where they touch the actually touch the ground then compared to the shadow the the like whole car makes okay makes sense. okay i hope it does. it does okay great lori says sarah i love the way you explain shadows in the tutorial oh. three exclamation points thanks i love the way you paint the shadows on this project oh thank you it brings it and adam fell through he doesn't know the answer to the question we had. 
I don't remember the question. Oh, how it was different from texture. Yes. How mouthfeel yes. was different. He said, from "I texture. don't know, man. I'm not some food dork." But then he goes. <laughs> but then he goes on. Then he goes on to list boiled shrimp, pineapple shrimp, fried shrimp, butterfly shrimp, chowder shrimp sandwich. Whoa. So he sounds like a food dork. Uh, he sounds great. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we love like food dorks. That's uh, Bubba. That's um, Bubba Gump. Bubba yeah. Gump. <laughs> Awana says mouthfeel is in advertising how the texture feels in the mouth. So that's how. Oh. Tracy says that rubbery shrimp mouthfeel was overcooked shrimp. Yeah, usually shrimp shouldn't be rubbery. Interesting. Maria said that a man used to give her son when he was little, or her, so when her son was little, people used to give him food all the time. Some man at another table said he looked hungry, gave him some fries off his plate in Applebee's. Oh, that totally has happened to me before. It's weird. It's weird. <laughs> People I... like feed my kids at restaurants. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. If they feed me, that's different. <laughs> I'll take food. <laughs> I do kids, just like, kids are on their own. I want some fries. Yeah, they're not going to enjoy Look the fries. Look how little they, they are. Like, they don't need food. <laughs> they won't remember this meal. <laughs> I'm bigger than they are. Yeah. I need that. I'm growing. Uh... Okay. Adam says, sorry guys, it's the Patron talking. <laughs> Adam, I'm really glad you're here. <laughs> that's all I want to say. Okay, that's our shadow. It looks great, Molly. Yes, that's beautiful. I love the little hint of blue you have in there too. That's so nice. Put a shadow on your body though. Oh, I missed that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now we're gonna wait. Um, mine has been drying for a second. I'm gonna wait to do the legs until your shadow has completely dried because of course, if you want something to stay sharp and defined, you don't wanna paint on a wet surface or else it will bleed out. So we are going to do the detail lines on our wings because those should be dry by now. And I just see if they're dry by touching my paper. I don't know if that's what you're supposed to, but that is what I do. So, now this is where our thin lines are going to come in handy. That practice we did at the beginning, so I'm grabbing my round two. Shayla says Adam is her kind of people. <laughs> I was gonna say, Adam shouldn't have told us what his drinking game was, because now we can just be like, damp brush. <laughs> damp brush. <laughs> I feel like Adam's living the kind of life I wanna live talking about shrimp and doing drinking games <laughs> while painting. <laughs> okay, only if you're 21, guys. I just realized children watch this. Yeah. Be responsible is what People I'm saying. People drink juice. That's yes. True. That's true. Some cranberry juice. Well, Play a risky game of chocolate milk. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe prune juice, throw that in there. <laughs> I don't know if I would do prune juice. It's terrifying. Somebody says the seahorse is kind of like shrimp. Like eating it? Has somebody eaten seahorse? They're a sea majestic horse? creatures Are you allowed that to Aquaman's so army uses. I would never eat one. <laughs> Let's see what Susan meant. Okay, I'm grabbing brown with my two. Now I'm going to start doing my detail lines. So these lines are just like vein detail lines. Now, here is the thing with these detail lines, though. You want to make sure that they're not too dark. Because if they're too dark, it's distracting. It's like super thick black outlines. It would almost, um, it, it would just be too much. It's too much, you guys. It's not gonna be that dark. So just, just do like the nice brown that we already mixed, okay? And then you can always test it and you can just do like one. You can do it on your, your paper. And I'm like, okay, that's a pretty, basically we don't want it too much darker than the rim of the top of our wing. And now um, with the detail lines, they're kind of like those butterfly wings. So usually they kind of just like vein out. So if you want to use a reference photo to kind of go off, you can. I'm just gonna wing it, which I know we've said that joke a few times, but it was really appropriate there. Yeah. Could you tell the colors for brown again? Brown is a mixture of green, your leaf green, and magenta. If you want it more orangey, mix in some orange. Thank you. Good. Okay. So then, um, 
they're kind of like tree branches a little bit, like more curvy tree branches. So think of these, these veins as they go out and then smaller pieces go out from there. And some of them connect I'm just kind of eyeballing it. <laughs> and I don't, and don't stress about this part because I don't think anybody would stop and be like, the veins on that wing, wing are not accurate and then pull out a diagram of a dragonfly wing. Like people don't do that. They're like fingerprints. Yeah, are well, they really? Different. I don't know. <laughs> Molly, are you making things up on my on the show? Listen. We're against that here. That is not how we roll. <laughs> Only factual information, a hundred percent of the time. <laughs> how big were dragonflies? You said to like two well, feet. Well, back. Yeah. Pa what did I say? Pa paleo Paleolithic area era. Something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's a diet. It's a it. diet plane. Two foot wingspans. That's crazy. They could eat your face off. They found fossils of dragonflies that had two foot wingspans. That's insane. Said to be 300 million years Wait, old. I have a question though. Yeah. If it's a fossil, uh -huh. could it be not a dragonfly? You know what I mean? Like, well, what, I if, mean, what if it was something else? Can they tell that? I don't know. Well, I would assume they could tell. Well, I think if they want it to be a dragonfly, they'll call it a dragonfly. <laughs> <laughs> Molly's like, they get to choose, so, like, Sarah. They found a, a fossil. Fly. That's right. I, don't know. I, I do wonder why some, I don't know if they're dragonflies or if they're just related, but there's dragonflies, then there's damselflies, and they're like... I have never once heard of a damselfly. They're like smaller, they got a smaller body. Oh, really? Yeah. So how big are they? Are well, they just like mini dragonflies? As far as size, they're the same, but like their bodies are way more like delicate looking. Oh, interesting. She's the damsel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you decide. Don't get her started. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I did the details on two wings so far. Adam. I'm going our, on the other one. Our friend Adam, I'm not sure if this is the Patron speaking or not, but he says... Paleontologists believe prehistoric dragonflies could breathe fire, which is why they are called dragonflies. I believe what? it. I believe it. That's amazing. That is amazing. But that would be I'm, really cool. Now this may just be like the sciencey part of my brain, but I doubt that they found fossils before naming a dragonfly. Oh, I good mean, point. I don't feel like there's record way like, back then, like, uh, oh, it breathes fire. Like, you would to have to look and see when the first record of the dragonfly Fact was named, Adam. and then how long ago that was, and then when did they discover those yeah. fossils. I mean, I'll believe it, but I also... With dates you know. is what she's saying. Yeah. She'll believe it with proof. C see. Cecilia <laughs> says, Adam... Damp brush. <laughs> Fair game. Uh, Amy says, did you know that dragonflies can fly backwards? Yeah, up, down, but they're like... Hummingbirds can do that also. Yeah. What? Look at my smart fact. Oh, nice fact. <laughs> Like Kathy two. says damselfly wings do not go out to the side when they rest. They go oh, back okay. in line with the body. Oh, they just go in? Or do they go in like this or up like this? I think they go in Probably with the body with flush. The... This is what he needs to know. <laughs> <laughs> what he said, but he needs to know. I don't know if it was in the right frame for that. but. You were <laughs> You're always in play. Uh, Tiffany asks if we've ever seen sea dragons. Those are like seahorses, aren't they? Yes. They're like beefy seahorses? Yes, they're like extra seahorses where they have like extra floaty extra. flanges. <laughs> they require kind of... more things than a <laughs> They do. <laughs> <laughs> they're like accessorized seahorses. I don't, I don't know how to better describe <laughs> them. <laughs> Uh. 
Linda says, can we please have a hummingbird project one month? Linda, I would like to say that I have planned out projects for the future, and a hummingbird is in there. Nice. Secret. But I'm not going to tell you which month. But it Smell. is planned. How are your veins coming, Molly? Oh, oh they're great. veiny. They look great. I will not uh, paint them in vain. <laughs> <laughs> Rhonda says, does anyone remember the sea monkeys from the back of the magazines? Oh, like the little powdery sea monkeys that you would put in yeah. water to get them to grow? They're like super old creatures. Can't read. Something so. like that. <laughs> Can't reach. <laughs> I don't remember them, but I've heard of them. But my parents actually also never got magazines, or I never did. Lori says, hooray for a hummingbird. Sarah, the one you did in Watercolor Summit was great. Mm. It's going to be a, a little bit of a looser version than that. That one I did in the Watercolor Summit is very, very detailed. It's beautiful, but it's pretty intense. So we will do a hummingbird just a little bit different. Okay, now whenever you're done with your wings, you can go ahead and paint your legs. I'm just gonna use that same black mixture that I have. If you gotta mix more, I like to start with blue, and then I just keep adding colors and adjust from there. I just added some magenta. It's a little too purple, so I'm gonna grab some orange. And that made it a little too brown, so I'm gonna grab some more blue. And now we have that gorgeous dark color. I'm not outlining the bottom of the wings, just the top part is um, what I outlined in that darker brown. Oh, uh, according to Google, <laughs> Deanna says, Lord Google. An article in Science Daily, September 2018, states that for many species of insects, wings are like fingerprints. No two patterns are the same. Uh, Molly, you're so smart. I got my own Google <laughs> in my head. <laughs> She's like, I just use my brain for that. No, I just make up stuff that I think makes sense. Now, if you ask Brock, I am wrong 90% of the time. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm feeling kind of... About you should. <laughs> uh, Elise asked what the watercolor summit was, and that is actually how me and Nicole met. We were both asked to be teachers in a watercolor summit, which was basically an online wa watercolor course taught with how many teachers? Eight. Eight different teachers. We all covered different subjects. I taught feathers and fur, so I taught how to paint a hummingbird. Um, it is. I, is it still for sale, Nicole? I think so. Yeah, you can register for it. You can just. You can put a link to it. Yeah, I don't. I can't put a link in it right now. But if you actually go to our Facebook group, people have linked um, it in there. But it's a little. It, um, you do have to pay for it. It's a little expensive. However, it's really great content by very very talented watercolorists. So if you're interested in learning a variety of sub subjects from different teachers, great thing to to look at. Okay, so I did my wing, my uh, uh, legs. Apparently they have another set of legs. That's what somebody said on Facebook and they could be right. But um, we're just gonna pretend that they're underneath the transparent wings and you don't see them. Perfect. Okay. And then I'm gonna use the same black to go ahead and put the black in on the body of my dragonfly. So just kind of going in through the center. And I'm kind of curving my brush strokes a little bit because this body is rounded. I like drawing their little feet. They're so yeah, cute. their little pincher feet. Did you know dragonflies catch their prey with their feet and then they like sit down and munch on them? 
I did not yeah. know that. They catch it's them in the air. So it's not creepy. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Lisa says all insects have six legs. That's true. That is a like. That would. That's I one feel thing like that I makes don't, them an insect. I feel like I don't have that's a correct definition of insects. Spiders are not insects because they have eight legs. Spiders so. are not insects. No, they're arachnids. I there. I'm amazed by how little <laughs> I know of the world that I live in. Mostly just like. <laughs> I feel like I should know that spiders aren't insects and all insects have six legs. I didn't know that about insects. I knew that about spiders because I like spiders. You knew that they weren't insects? Correct. What are they? Arachnids. Arachnids. That's why Arachnids. fear of spiders, arachnophobia. Yeah. Uh, Susanna says if you have thick veins, how do you make them thin? Okay. Blood thinners? Well, here's. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, <laughs> Susanna, if your veins are too thick, what I would suggest doing if you really want to try and redo it is try and blend out your, your veins in general. Just blend them out with a damp brush and try and even out that wash. And then when it dries, try again. There is no way to thin a line out after it's been already placed in watercolor, at least not cleanly. So I would try and blend out your wings so it's just an even surface. And then um, try again to get thinner legs. I got black on my wing. I'm gonna try and lift that up. So here I accidentally hit my wing with black that was on my brush. I'm just gonna take water, get that area wet, and then I'm going to lift and then I'm going to repaint that vein that lifted up. And now it's just not as noticeable. It, the mark is still there, but it's not distracting anymore. I think um, Sherry said, shouldn't all the legs be attached to the abdomen? No, um, wait. Love this dragonfly, but shouldn't all the legs be attached to the abdomen? No wings attached to the head. I think she meant legs attached to the head. And I don't think they're attached to the head. I think they're coming out from underneath the head. The thorax. Yeah. So this is the, the eyes here. I, I don't think the legs are coming out from the eyes. They're coming out from underneath the body. It's an illusion. So it looks like the four of the legs are attached to the thorax front and shoulder and two are attached to the prothorax. Okay, so the front ones are attached to the top the of the thorax. The larger part of the body and then there's like a shoulder joint thing in there and, and that's what it looks the like. The diagram ones, is hard for me to see. Would the third ones come out here? I was looking at a reference photo and I don't remember seeing a third set of yeah. legs so the wings must have covered it. Even though they're transparent, they you should still be able to see some of it. Yeah. It's a, it's a dragonfly, so. <laughs> it's a dragonfly. <laughs> Heidi says it, it's art, you can do what you want. Yeah. Heidi, touche, that's a great point. Okay, okay, now you're doing your body, great. Yeah. And now we're on finishing details, you guys, we made it. We have made it almost to the end. So this is where you take a step back and just make any adjustments that you feel like you need to make. I I think I'm going to go in and just add a little bit of blue to my shadow because I liked how Molly did that. Now, if you're happy with your shadow, anything that I do during this point, you do not have to do because what we have all painted is different from each other. So what I might do to my painting, you might not need. So don't feel like you have to do exactly everything that I do. And I'm just going to put in a little bit of this extra shadow underneath the body. I want it to be a little bit bluer. I liked that hint of blue. Maybe it's sitting on water or something, you know? Yeah. Or um, shadows don't always have to be gray. Shadows really depend on um, so many things, like the light that's around it. And also in art, you can change the color of things to not be always what they are. 
and it still works out just fine. But shadows are a great thing to add when you're just doing a single, um, if you like this single illustration where we don't have a background, it's a great way to give it, make it feel more dimensional while also grounding the object at the same time so it doesn't seem like it's just floating in space. Um, Laura says, why is the back set of wings gray in the reference photo but not in the painting? Um, I don't think these are gray. I think these are still brown. I probably put a little bit more blue in that brown mixture to tone down the warmth of it, which I can show you how to do. So if these are too yellow and you want to tone down the yellow, you're going to take your brown mixture and put a little bit of blue in there. And then you can paint that on your wings. So it just depends. I made these wings brownish. If you want to make them grayish, like the same as your shadow, you can. Also, because I'm doing a wash over my detailed wings, I'm losing the detail of my veins. But I'm just illustrating color here for you. There. Okay. I think we're about ready to show our work. Molly. Oh, we are? Yep. Oh, we are. We're at we that point. We finished. That was the last step. That's nice. Finishing details. Did I just overwhelm you with that information? Because <laughs> I, <just>, I, <laughs> I think you're freaking like, out a little bit. My dragonfly looks like he got punched in the face, so. Why do you think that? No, he looks great. He thought he was getting a damselfly and it was another da dragonfly. Where, where do you feel like he's punched in the face? Right here, just. Where that black is? Yeah, like, I don't know. I feel like you're crazy and I have no idea what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. maybe it's his <laughs> eyes too, like the black didn't fade out, so I'm just gonna go back. You know, I'll fix it later, you just. Hold it up. Okay. We're doing this. <laughs> Kenan, are you ready? I am ready. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go, we're gonna pan up. Make, Make sure, sure this audio sounds, sounds good. good. Uh huh. Let me sure. shut that up. There we go. Sarah's painting. Beautiful. <laughs> Molly's painting. So good. So good, Beautiful. Molly. Beautiful. And I would like to I, show you something on Molly's painting. Keenan, get up close here. Okay. Not too close. This is great how she did the shadows on the legs because you see how she left a little bit of space in between the leg and the shadow itself? That is very good because that is true. Gotcha. And I didn't even mention that. You just yeah, did that. Yeah, how do that? I don't want to sound Shh. cocky, I guess. <laughs> well done. If it makes sense, I suppose. I don't know. Yeah, so if you're trying to do really specific shadows um, and, and the item, like whatever you're doing the shadows, like the leg, only the foot is touching the ground, the rest of the leg is not touching the ground, which means there would be a space between the leg and the shadow because there's a space there. Does that make sense? hope it does. It does. Okay. You guys are wonderful. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I had fun. We talked about many of things. If you painted this, share it. The best part, I feel, is when you guys get to see what we did at the end of the night, and I want you guys to join in on the fun. So post your work. If you're on Instagram, you could tag us in it, Let's Go Make Art, or hashtag Let's Make Art. Those are two different names, and I'm really sorry about that. <laughs> we also have a Facebook group um, called Let's Make Art Watercolor. 
which is a great place to share the art that you're creating and also see how other people are doing the same projects and also their personal work. So it's a really wonderful, supportive community for all types. And then this Thursday, Nicole is doing her live paint along and I'm doing it with her and we're doing this project here. Ooh, ah. So super fun project. Um, even if you don't subscribe to the lettering box, you can absolutely still tune in and paint this with us, uh, especially if you're doing watercolor because that's half of what it is. We're watercoloring it and then we're doing some lettering on top. So um, I think that's all I gotta say. Molly, You've been a dream. Keenan, pleasure as always. Thank you. Nicole, you're just great. And <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you Thursday night for Nicole's Life, 7.15 Central Standard Time. And that's all I got to say. Mm -hmm. Bye.